All right, so the next thing is we create all these mathematical models, and that's great and fantastic, but what we have to realize is that when, whenever we're going to solve a real-world problem and we're going to create this mathematical model, there are certain trade-offs that occur. And uh, the way we can look at this is as a cost-benefit thing. Uh, there are all sorts of benefits that we get from solving the real world problem. So if we put, I'll get a better color here. If we put benefit on one side, uh, then cost goes on the other side. And uh, this is my attempt at drawing a scale. You should get the idea. And the, the thing that happens here is anytime we, we add uh, sort of this benefit that we want to obtain, there is going to be a cost consequently associated with that. Um, what are some of the examples of, of benefits that we would seek from a mathematical model? Well, one of them possibly would be a, a highly accurate solution. So if we write down here, solution accuracy increasing solution accuracy uh, incurs certain costs and uh, now I, I'm not going to be exhaustive maybe in this list but uh, one of the costs comes from a higher model complexity so model uh, complexity is one of those costs that's incurred uh, additionally if there's higher model complexity which you are going to need to have a higher solution accuracy then there's also going to be um, higher programming effort required. So you're going to have programming effort not to mention the mathematical modeling effort uh, and in the programming effort there's going to be the initial programming effort and additionally anytime you uh, write software there's going to be uh, the maintenance cost associated with that. Um, okay, so there are some of the costs that are incurred by um, increasing solution accuracy, increases model complexity and programming effort. Uh, another possible thing that we might want is is a, a solution that's very user-friendly. Maybe, um, so we're going to call that user-friendliness of the solution and costs incurred again uh, are going to be primarily the, the programming effort if you, if you need a solution that's just much much easier to read much more obvious oh you know I, I have these inputs I get this output this is the solution well that's going to take more programming effort to make that nice user-friendly uh, uh, solution that you have uh, come up with uh, in addition uh, we, another possible benefit that we might seek is timeliness, right? Uh, timeliness. Uh, I mean, I mean, if we look at these, it's it's uh, you know what every boss wants. He wants he wants uh, the, the the his product, uh, you know, excellent product, and he wants it uh, to be you know fantastic, user friendly, accurate, and he wants it yesterday, right? <laughs> So that's where the timeliness comes in. And in terms of timeliness, uh, there, there are several costs that may incur. Uh, one is that, that I can think of offhand is the software cost. So uh, that has to do with the software availability. And we're running out of room here, so we're just going to scroll down a little bit we'll lose a little bit of the head heading, but we realize we're doing cost-benefit analysis of the trade-offs in mathematical modeling. Okay, software availability, and in particular, uh, it takes time to roll your own solution, and sometimes it's less expensive, but it takes time uh, to roll your own solution and to, to custom program your software, although it, it may be more satisfactory, but um, but that's also maybe something that you can't afford so perhaps you're going to need a uh, commercial software commercial versus custom right 
maybe maybe you're going to do custom software uh, and those all possibly have to do with timeliness and maybe some of the other issues too also uh, another desirable thing in a solution is uh, generality or in other words the breadth of application A solution is much better if it applies not only to the specific problem that you're given, but if you uh, change maybe some of the inputs a little bit, you change, tweak some of the parameters, uh, maybe uh, some of the initial data that you got wasn't completely accurate, but you give it a little bit of different data. If your model can still handle that, if your mathematical model can still handle that, that is a more general solution to the problem, and that is also a desirable benefit. Now, in order to have a better model like that, you're going to need uh, higher, uh, I'm going to call it modeling expertise. We can look at that as a commodity, maybe uh, better engineers, uh, more more educated, but that also has to do, uh, it's not just something that, that you can just say, well, we should just pay more for that. Is It's not always possible. That always also depends on uh, the method availability. All right. So going back up here, recognizing, again, this is trade-offs in mathematical modeling. We can uh, trade some things off or another, but ever, for every benefit that we incur, uh, there's a certain cost that's going to be associated with that. If we want a high, more accurate solution, we're going to probably have to come up with a more complex mathematical model. We may need uh, uh, more complex software to handle that. Uh, I, I didn't even mention uh, hardware availability and hardware cost. We may have to have more powerful computers. Maybe we're going to have to have a supercomputer to uh, solve the problem if it's too complex. And so there, there, are these, there are these benefits and costs that have to be balanced when, in, when, we, uh, when we solve any, any mathematical model in order for it to be practical. So that's uh, something that I'm going to introduce here is the question of practicality. Okay, so when we look at anything, we say, well, is this solution practical? And we may be able to get all the benefits that we want, but if the costs are just so enormous, uh, they they may outweigh the benefits. And uh, it's, it's interesting to note because and to note this because what was impractical yesterday may not be impractical tomorrow because maybe we'll have more powerful computers, maybe the software availability will change, maybe uh, maybe there, there are more uh, readily accessible uh, uh, advances in, in mathematical modeling, whatever, uh, any of these things can change the practicality of a solution and, and I guess Maybe I should just define practicality. So practical solution. I'm, I'm going to call a practical solution is uh, one in which the benefits outweigh the costs. Okay, and and there are all sorts of other complexities that we could add here. Uh, environmental impact, uh, just all sorts of things that that we haven't mentioned, but but that could come to bear when you're looking at the benefits and costs. But realize again that these are some of the trade-offs that you will encounter as you do mathematical modeling and you always have to be asking yourself is this solution practical? What is the practicality of implementing the solution that we've come up with? And I, I just want to point out as well keep this, this is something that is really important to keep in mind all throughout the course because we are going to talk about a lot of different 
uh, a lot of different mathematical models, a lot of different approaches, and you're going to see that a lot of times we really can trade off a simpler um, we can use a, a simpler mathematical model. It may be more robust. It may take more time to converge, but it may be more sure that it's going to converge. But it may it may have lower accuracy, and and that there there are always these things that we can that we need to consider. And these are some of the complexities you're going to encounter when you try to to apply uh, a mathematical model, apply it back to that real world problem. We have to ask ourselves: Is going to as engineers whether it's going to be practical?